What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So today is kind of like part two. We're talking about watering the lawn, but I got a lot more on board in this one because we're gonna be talking about how to set up watering your lawn when you have to do it with a manual sprinkler. In fact, I'm gonna show you how to do it when you can only run one at a time. And of course, as you know, setting up that sprinkler strategy, manual, or as we did last week with my in-ground sprinklers, you're gonna have to take the tuna can challenge. So let's get after it and have a little bit of fun. Now, the reason we call it the tuna can challenge is because a tuna can is about an inch deep. And what you wanna do is find out how long does it take to water each area Area of your lawn, in this case with a manual sprinkler, an impact sprinkler, and get down a half inch of water. The reason that a half inch of water is a magic number is because a lot of products that we use out there, such as prodiamine, or if you're using certain kind of grub controls, they need to be watered in one half inch. Man, these weeds are getting away from me. I know, I know, Sean Gregory. That annoys you when I leave that hose out. Now there are other products that will require a quarter inch and this and this and that, but then the other piece of it is when the weather isn't cooperating with you, which for me, the last several days and all of us here in Florida, we've been rain for days, literally every day, like all day rain, which it's been nice, but it's been a little bit too much now, even though we are coming out of a super dry period. By the way, I did show in last week's video some, some clips of some lawns and how they looked after we came out of this four week hot dry period. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what they looked like about a week after when we had rain almost every day. Hey, so good morning, it's Sunday morning. Happy Father's Day, y'all. So I'm gonna go out here and give you an update on those lawns from last week. I hope the wind isn't gonna be too bad in this. But those were lawns that had not been properly watered. Well, there's two different ones. There's one, the first one that was not watered at all, really, it looks like, or not watered properly for sure during the four week hot dry period we had. Some people calling it a drought. That was way too wordy. And then the other one got almost enough water. So I'm gonna show you what those look like now because we've had literally like eight straight days of rain and overcast. You can see today it's overcast. So that's really been good conditions for lawns that are trying to recover, especially because there's been some lightning with it. So it's a lot of free nitrogen. That's the other thing I wanted to mention right now is I realized in the last clip that some of you will say, Alan, your domination is gone. Your neighbor, he, he caught up to you. I mean, yeah, that's St. Augustine grass. You should follow me on Twitter because we talk about things in real time live like that. And I show that free nitrogen is equally free to everybody. So when you live down here, the rainy season is good for all of us. And you know, I always treat my St. Augustine grass like it's Kentucky bluegrass, but like Green Doc always says, that's kind of a futile thing, or I think he says a futile. Does he use the word futile? Maybe he uses the word infantile, but either way, yeah. I try, to, I try to treat it like it's Kentucky bluegrass, but San Augustine doesn't work that way. All right, let's check out these lawns. So think about this, these are neglected lawns or lawns that were not really treated like I would say they should be, and look at how far they've come back. Check this out. But anyway, as I ride to the next one, the other thing is my neighbor on that side, he actually does take good care of his lawn. He mows it properly. He waters manually, but he was out there almost every night watering during the dry period. So, you know, hats off to him for doing a good job on his lawn too. And for those of you that still want to leave a comment and say, Alan, you're getting dominated. Well, I just want you to know, you really are hurting my feelings. So success to you on Father's Day. Thanks. This one was really badly damaged. You can see it's still got some damage, but you can see the St. Aug is already starting to green up right in the middle of the spots there. Looks like they had a fence installed. So you can see warm season grass, especially St. Augustine grass, this is mostly Floritam around here, it recovers pretty quick. Those stolons, they're big and strong and they stretch out. They dry up though, but then once you start getting rain and free nitrogen and all kinds of things, they'll fatten right back up and those tentacles will just keep crawling right across the ground, taking over like they do. I still got a lot of work to do on this side of the house. I'm getting there though. So in case that wasn't totally clear, because I really was trying to talk really fast in that one on purpose, just because I like doing it and it's fun. But what you want to do is, is you want to have a plan. You want to need to know where in the lawn do I have to set my manual sprinkler to get down a half inch of water as fast as I can and as efficiently as I can. Because when you're moving sprinklers, you would have to drink a lot of beers in between all that. And we don't want you to get too messed up on the weekends. By the way, I did not drink during this video. Last weekend's video was enough for me. But again, it's all about moving sprinklers. Where do you put them and how do you get them in the right spot strategically so that you can get your water down efficiently and know if you're getting down a half inch because again that's when you need to supplement whatever mother nature's not giving you you know how to do it quick <laughs> 
All right, now those of you that have been around for a while know that I harp on having a property map. So if you don't have a property map and you just find this video, I recommend you do that. And it's basically you measuring out each section of your lawn because pretty much everything you do in lawn care, from spraying and praying to putting down granular fertilizers, even purchasing a lawn mower, will really be dictated by this property map, what size it is, what the obstacles are, how your land is laid out. And that's all part of my number one mission for you guys is to help you learn your land. Now, the next thing that I did, and you guys know I always completely overcomplicate this but I like doing drawings because I think it's just part of how you learn makes you kind of think about things in a certain way so what I did is I'm actually pretending that I'm gonna go ahead and map out section 4 here and section 4 is 2,500 square feet it's it's my Empire's Zoysia we call it Frankenlawn even though that's not what it is anymore it's beautiful barefoot grass right now but anyway 2,500 square feet now again you would have to do this with every section of your lawn I'm just gonna show you how to do one single section today because I actually have in-ground sprinklers so so I don't necessarily need to do this for the entire lawn although there's there is a time to do manual watering even when you do have an in-ground sprinkler system. So can you see that section there right behind me? Just a week and a half ago or so when we had the super hot dry period, I actually went out of town for three, four days. And when I came back, this area here was completely and I'm gonna call it heat stress. I, people are using the word drought. I don't know, drought stress, whatever. You can see it in the pictures here. So I didn't wanna turn on an entire zone of sprinklers, which would have stretched all the way around the corner and everything else just to get that one spot. And there was one other little spot back over there as well but I didn't want to turn on a whole zone for that so I had a manual sprinkler I could set up and actually had a zone for that that I knew was right there in that corner that if I put it there for 12 minutes that I would be able to hit that area right there with a half inch of water so I kind of had done this type of math already I'm going to show you how to do it in an extremely overcomplicated way making maps making drawings and again it's all part of learning your land but even when you have a, an in-ground sprinkler system, it's still good to know the best spots to put your sprinkler out. But the other piece of that is, is to know where your weak spots are. We're gonna talk about weak spots in the second half of this video, and I'm gonna show you a remedy for that as well, because even the perfect watering plan, you're still gonna have some weak spots in lawn. You're gonna have areas where the roots just haven't developed as much, or maybe they're a little higher than other low spots or whatever, and the water just doesn't get there as evenly for one reason or another. And you're gonna wanna have a little bit of a plan to bolster those spots for the hottest days. So I'll give you that in the second half of this video. Okay, I know I talk too much, but I think some of you appreciate the longer videos do this is something you could do with your kids you know this would be a fun thing to do with your kids I mean I think this would be great actually so happy Father's Day dads so long and the short of it is so I took section 4 here and I busted it out and I made it a larger drawing now I'm gonna show you step by step how I did this but for now I'm just gonna give you the overview so what you see is I have this is the section it's kind of a pie shaped section and I've been able to choose two areas one up here this represents a sprinkler by the way and one down here and these two areas are able to cover this lawn efficiently in 28 minutes actually with only having to move the sprinkler once so let me show you how I got this set up by the way these represent our tuna cans so let me show you now how I got all this set up I promise you you'll have fun if you do this yourself. So if you're gonna water manually, that means you're gonna need a sprinkler. And I've always recommended impact sprinklers. The reason I recommend impact sprinklers is it's a super simple design. It gets the water through quick and efficient and it allows you to move on. So that's why I've always liked impact sprinklers. And I actually got this one from Gilmore. It's been three years ago now. You can see it's got some weather age on it. It's been in the sun and everything. And uh, but it still works great. This is called a Pattern Master, and I'm gonna show you exactly why I prefer the sprinkler. First of all, because it's cheap, it's 20 bucks. Second of all, it's lightweight and plastic, so it runs even on lower water pressure, and it's durable. Again, you can see, I mean, it's got some nicks and some scratches on it from me throwing it around, and let me tell you, I've been very hard on this thing, but it works great. Now, let me show you how and why I chose this particular sprinkler. By the way, there are links in the description below if you wanna pick one of these up. Okay, so the first thing I did was I just logically placed the sprinkler in a couple of spots to see where I could get the widest amount of coverage. And I came up with these two areas, one in the top left and one in the bottom right. At least that's how it looks on the photo that you're viewing here. And from there, I just adjusted the sprinkler to cover that area as efficiently as possible. And that's what's really cool about this Gilmore here. So this is a good spot here going a little far over there hold on let me adjust this second here there we go okay so this spot right here is excellent because I'm able to get all the way down there to the end see where it's going okay so that's good so I'm covered all the way up through there but over here I'm way over in my neighbor's lawn I'm sure he wouldn't care but you know he's got to do his own watering even though I like him Mike I love you buddy but I can't water your grass for you bruh that's where this sprinkler comes in though. See, it's got this track on it. 
and you can lift the track up and what it'll do is it'll push that stream down. I used to do this with bricks where I would weight the actual unit down. By the way, I got that lawn donut there. You might need a brick or something because this is plastic. So if your water pressure is high, it'll throw it around. However, it is good because this will run on low water pressure. So always a give and take. But either way, let me go back to this. So I'm good spraying far out there, but not over there. So we're going to make an adjustment here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop this track up at the end here. And you'll see what that immediately does is it focuses the stream downward. In fact, I'm going to put it up a little more. Watch. See that? That's cool. I don't know. I hope you can see that on video, but it's literally going down low. Now, some's still getting over there, so we have to do it a little more. There we go. Look at that. And then it fans right back out. I hope you can see that. Look at that. It fans down right there and then boop, pops right back up. Pretty cool. Now, one thing I don't actually like is I don't like how high up in the air it's going because that can, it's not windy today. And in fact, I shouldn't even be watering. It's cloudy out, but I got to get the video done. That's why my neighbors think I'm crazy. I'm watering my lawn in the middle of the day when it's about to rain in five minutes. But anyway, idea being, I don't like it to shoot up that high because when the rain or when the wind comes in, it can blow your water off target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually prop the back of this up some. Going all crazy now, Captain. There we go, that's much better. And this is the thing, when you water manually, you should always be prepared to kind of be able to rig things. You know, I got a slope right there, that's why that won't sit flat. So, you can see a couple, two tree bricks from the garage good to go now look at this beautiful stream look at how pretty this is now and in fact I gotta adjust that back down because look over here oh that's gold right there it's like watching a baseball game watching a home run go right down the line foul pull foul pull oh ooh, that one went foul pull a little bit let's see if this next one goes yeah we're slightly right at the foul pole so do another another tick and see how we do Oh, nah, yeah, I'll take that. It's inside the line slightly, but I'm all right with it. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay, that's why we're going to have another position anyway. So we're not so worried if we're missing just that upper corner, because this is not your only position, even though this is a good one. Now, the other thing I got to do now, because I put those bricks in, is I'm short over here now. Watch. Can you see that? It's like the water's stopping, like, right here. So what I got to do... Just pick this track down a little bit. There we go. Well, let's see how that did. One tick down. Yeah, now we just got to come over a little bit because our foul pole on this side. That looks pretty good. You can see it kind of fans out on the end, but I'm getting that corner decently. Yeah, I'm good with that. So now that I've got a good first spot done, and again, I'm making educated guesses here, I'm gonna guess where I think the second spot should be. Now you might need a third, but I didn't because my second spot was able to cover areas that were uncovered by the first, but also give me a little bit of overlap in some areas where I felt that I might be weak. So I was very lucky in that I was able to get this spot covered with only two sprinkler positions. And here's how I set up the second one. really hard to do this when you're holding the camera. Jeez. Oh, yeah, I need to get some more rock for that. Looks pretty good though. pretty good. I am watering his grass a little bit, but I'll make him pay me back in beer. Yeah, we are definitely covering right up to where the last one ended, so that's good. That's called the luck of the lawn care nut. Now we got to get over here. You can see over here it's doing a stop short, and that's my move. So I need to get it to cover this down and through here. And again, that's where this comes in nice, because I can pick these guys up real tall. And then I can move this, and that'll allow it to swing over 
Oh, we got to pick them up taller than that, Hane. See that? Pump those up all the way. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. There it is. It's not stopping short now. Baseline, bam, all the way over, get down low. Look at that. It's okay if it hips my shrubs over here. That's solid right there. I'm gonna show you one other quick trick here. You see how that stream is kind of solid here and it fans out way out there? Well, if you want it to do more like this, which doesn't go quite as far, but definitely fans the water out better, that's what this little nut or set screw right here is. It just interrupts the stream, watch. See that? Now I got the stream. Doesn't go quite as far, but it does span out a little bit better. So that's an idea there if you need that extra adjustment. I don't like mine to do quite that much, but I do like a little bit of fan in there. See that? Yeah, that fans out much better. I like it. All right, I'm good. I got away with two spots with this fairly well, I think. Yeah, I'm positive I did. So I'm gonna go get my other tuna can and set that out. Now, before we go getting too crazy here, I already know there's gonna be a million different scenarios here. I have a pie-shaped section here. You might have a square, a rectangle, a circle. You might have a little bit of everything. I always want you to remember this. The best thing about being human is that you're able to make educated guesses. And in fact, those of you that are successful in life, it's because you've made quite a few educated guesses in your past. And with lawn care, it's no different. And that's why I want you to go through all the trouble that this takes to kind of set these spots up and draw them out and understand what it's like because you're gonna eventually need to make educated guesses because you're not gonna be able to get all of your watering done every single week if you only have one single sprinkler, which is what I'm doing in this scenario here. It's, it's a worst case scenario that you can only run one sprinkler at a time. You're gonna have to make some educated guesses and I'm here to tell you, I'm Alan Hain, I'm the lawn care nut and it's okay for you to make educated guesses when it comes to irrigation and many other things when it comes to lawn care. Okay, now it's time to do the tuna can challenge. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave the sprinkler where it is because that was the last setup I did and I'm gonna set a tuna can out right in the middle of the stream. I'm calling this the ideal spot. And that's what I wanna measure. How long does it take to get a half inch of water in there? However, I'm also gonna put a couple more tuna cans out in areas where I suspect that the coverage may not be as good and I'm gonna rely on the overlap of the other sprinkler to help catch me up. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I test how long it takes to get a half inch of water down from each position. And then I check all the cans and see where I'm at, making logical, educated guesses from there. Okay, so now it's been running for 15 minutes and I checked it, it's pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and I'll show you. You're gonna have to check your own, obviously. Do what you gotta do. You're gonna see you get, you know, wet when you check them. That's just part of the fun. Now this one won't have anything in it. By the way, I wanted to mention, this is the corner, you know, and this will be hit by the other one, but my weak spots are right here. So that's the other thing. If I, if I know this is getting enough coverage, then I know my weak spots right here will get enough coverage. As well as I have a weak spot right here. You guys knew about this. And so I've got that one over there to see. So let's just check. This is the one that's like right at the edge of that spray. So it also is right at the edge of that other position over there. So let's just see where we're at after 15 minutes. Yeah, see, just under half inch there. See that? Doesn't ha quite have a half inch in it. This one, which is in the middle of the spray though. Oh yeah, it definitely has a half inch. See that? Okay, so in that position right there, it's 15 minutes approximately. I mean, I came out here at like 14 minutes and checked it and then lollygagged around getting the camera together, but you guys get the idea. So 15 minutes is what I'm writing down for this section to be ideally covered. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave my overlap over there. That one over there is an overlap. And I'm gonna go and put my sprinkler in the other position now and run that one. I don't know if it'll be 15 minutes or not because it might be a little bit wider, but you get the idea. All right, so there it is. There's the ideal position. Overlap over there, overlap over here. Let's get this one set up now. Okay, so my second section I did test, but for some reason I didn't film the results. It's 13 minutes, and actually my overlap cans did just fine. They got a little under a half inch of water, but still all good. So now I know that I can water this lawn confidently and quickly in 28 minutes. That's not really that bad if you think about it. So there you go. Now you gotta imagine that this wouldn't take you very long. I mean, this is a 2,500 square foot area. Most of you that are 
that are, you know, watering manually, you probably don't have more than six or 7,000 square feet. So you might have, maybe you have a front that's 2,500 and a back that's 2,500 and a little on the sides. You know, the side yards, let them fend for themselves, kind of like a stray dog. What I'm getting at here is, is don't set yourself up for like a, I can only water on Saturdays and Wednesdays kind of schedule. Don't do that. You might have to water every night at some point when you're not getting help from Mother Nature and it's super dry out and you're getting no cloud cover. You might have to water every night, but you're not watering every piece of the lawn every night. You're doing two sections in the front tonight, two sections in the back tomorrow, skip a day, go back two sections in the front that day, two sections in the back the next day. You're going around, you're kind of running a schedule, kind of like you juggle kids with school and sports schedules. You get one here, you get one there. One has to stay a little longer, one has to get there a little early, but it all kind of works out in the end. I actually did a podcast segment on that, and I'll link that in the description below where you can hear me kind of explain it. I think it's a fun way to look at it, but I hope it'll get you to look at your watering just a little bit differently. By the way, speaking of areas that you treat like a stray dog, when I say you treat them like a stray dog, you just kind of put some food out for them every once in a while, but mainly you let them fend for themselves because they've learned how to live in the toughest of conditions and you don't want to spoil that you want to let them do that and that's what I do with my parkways here at least these they're so thin I don't even keep the irrigation on them or anything and look at how good they look all those really get is a little bit of the humic 12 humic acid every once in a while maybe a little air eight but that's about it I don't I don't treat these any other way that happens to be Scott's Pro Vista St. Augustine grass right there and you can see I mean, it's doing really, really well. Now, there's one other thing, though, that I do put on it that helps it for the fact that I don't water it, and I'm gonna show you that now. This is Hydrotain from the company Ecologel, which is based here in Ocala, Florida. It's a unique chemistry, and basically what it does is it takes and pulls humidity or water from the air and pulls it right next to the roots of your turf. It's not a surfactant like what a lot of other products on the market use, but it is used in a similar way. But again, this is a unique chemistry. Here's when I met with the owner, Rick, and he shows you the product in action. This is the wrong, one of the wrong ingredients for the product. It's just a white powder, and mm -hmm. this powder is very hygroscopic. And so you're gonna see its ability to grab moisture out of the air and turn itself to drops of water. So we're gonna do this under a microscope. Put this under the microscope and now you'll see it up on the screen as individual granules. We're gonna back this up a little bit so you can see those granules clearly. Okay. And you're gonna start seeing some motion, like motion. See that here, there, and there? It's where it's pulling moisture out of the air and it's beginning to grow in size. Uh, and it will continue pulling that moisture until it reaches an equilibrium with surrounding moisture levels. Now, to speed that up, because the humidity level in here is not that high, right. I'm going to increase the humidity level by breathing across it, and you're going to see it take the moisture out of my breath. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely see it. <laughs> so, I need to test this like in my garage where it's super humid. So give it a few minutes, that's actually going to turn to one big drop of water. So hydrotain has been around for a long time and it's been in the professional in the golf market. And this is why I tell you there's a lot of products out there that I find that I know work or that I've even used in my own professional life or here at home. And I really want to bring those to the DIY market. Now hydrotain has been available to the DIY market for a while, but again, it's not like, you know, big retailers are talking to them and talking it up and all that. They, they pretty much keep the Scots and the orthos of the world on their shelves. So this is a product though that really does work well and it's, it's unique on the market. It's a very unique chemistry. Like I said, it's not a surfactant or like any other kind of product that's out there and it works really well and it's been around for years and now it's available to DIYers and you can get that in a liquid or a granular form. So I just want to clarify here, when you use the hose-in sprayer, the product does come out quite quick and I do recommend that you water it in immediately. You don't want this product drying on the leaves of the grass blades, you want it to get deep into the soil. So on top of the hose-in sprayer, there's a water only setting. So basically spray your dry spot, or in this case, spray your thin parkway, then turn immediately to water and water it in. That's how I recommend you use the liquid, is mostly for spots or small areas. If you're gonna do a broadcast setting because you wanna cover your entire lawn, that's when I recommend that you use the granular. You know, I was just kind of rethinking that analogy on uh, stray dogs, and I think that was a wrong analogy. I think stray cats is a better analogy. You know, stray cats, tomcats, they want that stray cat strut, you know what I'm saying? And they're tough, and they, they live in tough environments. And yeah, they need you sometimes, and they'll come around when they need you, a stray cat will, but for the most part, they survive on their own, and you don't want to take that from them. You want them to learn to survive in those tough conditions, like where a parkway lives. So, stray cat. I treat them like a, I treat parkways like a stray cat. I give them what they need when they say they need it, when they let me know. But for the most part, I let them fend for themselves. And so far, that's worked out really well for me.
with a little help from my friends. Make sure you water this in good again if you're using the liquid. So here's the two bags you can get dry. The application rate is three pounds per thousand. I'm gonna go ahead and do this area out here since this is the area we've been talking about today already. It's 2,500 square feet. So I'll give you the Scott's Edge Guard Deluxe Spreader setting after that, but that's the area I'm gonna do with it. So if you get the smaller bag, it's three pounds. So it's a 1,000 square foot bag. So if you're somebody that has a small lawn, this is great. Or obviously you can use this for potted plants and stuff. Just be aware, this smells like success. So I wouldn't put it on potted plants that you may have to put up under a lanai or something like that. I just don't know how that's going to affect the enjoyment of the lanai unless you're like me and you like the smell of it then you get the idea. For the lawns though again this is 15 pounds so at three pounds per thousand this will cover 5,000 square feet so I'm going to need exactly half of this bag. Three pounds per thousand is the high rate. You can go at two and a half pounds per thousand too but I just do the high rate which is three pounds per thousand so 15 pound bag is going to cover 5,000 square feet. In case you're wondering where I got that right here apply to established lawns at a rate of 2.5 to 3 pounds per thousand. So we'll just go at the high rate, which is 3 pounds per thousand. Two, by the way, this will not burn your lawn. So this is a great product for you to learn with. It won't hurt anything, but it'll learn, learn you how to apply a granular application. So let me open her up here. <coughs> oh yeah, it definitely smells like success. So for a larger area in a broadcast application, or if you can't water it in right away, I recommend you use the granular hydro tank. All they really do is they take that same powder that you saw, instead of suspending it in a liquid, they get organic chicken compost and they stick it in there. And that's why it smells like success. Additionally, you will also get some micronutrients that flush out because of the compost carrier but they don't claim it on the bag. But just be aware of that. That's why you don't want to use this in spots in the lawn because it can also cause the lawn to turn a little bit darker from the nutrients that are in that wonderful chicken compost. That's also what gives it the smell of success. And I mean, it really does smell like success in a good way. But when I applied, it lasted for less than 24 hours and it was gone after I got it watered in. Speaking of watering in, you do want to get this watered in within three to four days and you want to get a full half inch of water on it. That's pretty good. I would say definitely setting 5.5 is perfect to get 2,500 square feet done. So we'll circle dance the rest of this out and we'll be good to go. Now make sure you get this watered in. You've got your brand new leaf discovered sprinkler points. And in this case, it's only going to take you 28 minutes to do it. Remember, these products don't work if they don't get to the roots. One half inch of water, going down. So there you go, guys. I think that was a pretty comprehensive, detailed, fun video. Even had some nice draw rings in there, all about how to set up a watering plan for your lawn. And then if you need those extra dry spots taken care of, a product that works really well. With that, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to check out my podcast, Lawns Across America, linked in the description below. I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lawn.